Hello, you're watching Bones and Stones and what you're looking at here is a bunch of planarians that I collected from my local lake. A planarian is a type of flatworm that is a platy helmet from the class Turbularia and the term planarian strictly refers to aquatic triclads. What is a triclad? Well, you can divide flatworms into two groups, those with digestive systems with three branches, the triclads, and those with digestive systems of many branches, the polyclads. An aquatic triclad is a planarian. So I want to identify these. So let's get a pipette and take it out and stick it under the microscope. Uh, watch as the planarian group bunches up into a blob as you use a pipette. That's quite a sensitive sign of that you've got a planarian. You stick it under the microscope, you can see it is a pigmented flat creature with a truncated head and it glides smoothly along that bottom of the petri dish and that's because its underside is covered in tiny ventral cilia to give this illusion of gliding over the top of things. But what is it? How do you identify it? So today I'm going to show you how to identify planarians. The first thing I always do is consult the Natural History Museum website. So planarium, Natural History Museum, identify. And immediately we get a checklist of British freshwater triclasida, in other words, planarians. And we can see this is a comprehensive checklist of British freshwater triclasid flatworms detailing accepted scientific names and BRC recording codes. And you can see, according to the Natural History Museum, there's only 13 species in the UK. So you think, well, can't be that difficult to identify then, because there's only 13 species. But let's say you take Planaria Torva here, click on it, you don't get an image or anything that will help you identify it. So that's not really useful. So what about if I Google the name Planaria Torva? Look at images. And you'll see you get lots of images of flatworms and most aren't Planaria Torva. You've got this one here, which is just uh, a generic Planaria. You've got this other planarian here, which definitely isn't planaria torva. And these worms look completely different, but they've all got the caption planaria torva. So you're left thinking, how on earth do I identify anything? Most of these aren't even in the genus planaria. They're just planarians. So this isn't helpful. We need another way. You need a key. So let's search planarian identify key. we go down can we find a key anywhere we can't and that's because for most niche organisms keys are really difficult to find online especially free easily accessible ones you usually have to buy a book so let me give you a tip for aquatic organisms it's a really good idea to look at the EPA website that's the American Environmental Protection Agency and that's because they often produce guides on identifying freshwater organisms because they need it to be able to monitor the water quality and be able to make uh, environmental choices so if I search for EPA planarian identify straight away you get this so let's click on it There we are, freshwater planarians of North America. Perfect. And this is a very outdated website, so I have to cl keep clicking next page. But you can see this was commissioned as part of water pollution research. Uh, these documents prepared by the Oceanography and Limnology Programme, Smithsonian Institution for the Environmental Protection Agency, will contribute towards improving the quality of the data upon which environmental decisions are based. So let's just flick to the contents. There's the abstracts. Here we are. So you can see that this is a really useful guide because it tells you how to collect them, how to transport and culture them, even how to prepare them for anatomical study. And then of course, what we're after, key to the species. So the best way is not to keep clicking next page and waiting, but to download it as a PDF. So you click that, you get this. This is a PDF of Freshwater planarians of North America, identification manual number one. So let's flick downwards. And you can see, you've got all of this amazing information. 
anatomical diagrams. And then you've got a key to genera. And then what we want, key to the species. So let's have a look at it again. Number one, what is the shape of the head? And we can see it's anterior end tru truncate. So we go to seven. Seven, frontal margin with or without adhesive organ. I mean, looking at this, I can't see any adhesive organ on the front of its head. So we're going to go with without. So go to eight. Is the body pigmented? Yes, so we go to nine. Eyes normally two, or eyes numerous on margins of the head. Now, we can't see any eyes on this at all. When it says two eyes, what that refers to is a planarian with two eyes right on the front of the head. In fact, it usually looks like a cartoon. It's quite funny. And we can't see these at all here. So it must be eyes numerous on the margins of the head. And there we go. We've got a genus instantly, Polycelis. So now let's go to 19. 19. Bursa duct with anterior glandular and posterior non-glandular secretions or bursa duct non-glandular throughout. And that will let us identify it as either Polycelis coronata borealis or it will make us go to 20, in which case it's just two other subspecies of Polycelis coronata. But either way, we've got a species, Polycelis coronata. So let's take a look at our Polycelis coronata. Wow. Is this actually a Polycelis coronata? Remember that this book is for the planarians of North America, so it might not be accurate for the UK. So let's pause that and go back to our Google search. What do these look like? Well, Polycelis coronata looks to be a completely different colour to what we've got here. And if you look at the head of it, if that is indeed Polycelis coronata, you can see that it really isn't what we've got. Identification manuals from other countries don't usually work in, in your own. What you need is something closer to your own country. But the genus isn't off. Let's have a look at this. You can clearly see that that looks very, very similar to what we found in the local lake. It's the same pigment, it's the same shape, and it's got roughly the same kind of truncated head. So I'm pretty confident that what we've got is in the genus Polycelis. So let's try and look for a different key. Let's get rid of that. Planarian, identify key. Let's see what we can find. And usually, if you're lucky, you should be able to find a key for organisms of Europe. Now, I'll save you time because I've already done this. And what I managed to find was a really good key to the freshwater triclads of Herzegovina, which is in mainland Europe. So we've got an introduction which tells you all about them, sampling sites and methods. And here we are. We've got a nice selection of planarian heads. And if we zoom in there, you can see what I was talking about before, about those two little cartoon eyes. This is definitely not what our planarian has. Our planarian has eyes on the side. Um, it's interesting to note that here gives a very good example of polyclad anatomy. Can you see this intestinal system, which you can see because the worm is transparent, is divided into many branches. So let's go down here. There's some other planarians. And now we have a key. Here we are. Wow. And number one, head with all shaped tentacles variable length. No, head without all shaped tentacles. So yeah, head without all shaped tentacles. So let's go to three. One pair of eyes, or eyes numerous along the margins. So, yep, let's go to five. Pigment usually distributed uniformly. Animals commonly black. Ventral surface, same colour as the dorsal. Elongated penis. Now, apart from the penis bit, we can safely say that our planarian fits this description. And the identification, Polycelis nigra. 
our species was indeed in the Polycelus genus. So, let's see if this document contains a picture of Polycelus nigra and we can confirm. Here we are. And Polycelus nigra is picture C. There we are. This is indeed what our planarian looks like. You could argue that it looks more like B, but I don't think the... I don't think our planarian has these little tentacle bits on the outside. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's C. D looks quite like it. What's D? D is Polycelus tenuous, so still in the Polycelus genus. So we can be pretty confident that it's one of these two things. Um, and from the key, we are led to believe that it is indeed Polycelus nigra. There we have it. We've successfully identified our planarians. I will leave a link to this document as well as the EPA document in the video description so that you can have a look at it yourself. It has lots of very interesting information about not only the anatomy, but the identification of these really interesting creatures. And they're so easy to miss. I've been visiting the same lake for years and it's only when I started looking for them that I found these things.